Jim Grossman, the executive director of the American Historical Association, has a saying that he uses all the time, everything has a history. What he means by this is essentially that anything can be studied historically, and studying something, uh, the history of something, right, studying something historically can reap significant benefits. Now, um, that saying has become so popular in the American Historical Association that the AHA's magazine, Perspectives, has now started a, a whole um, series of columns with the title Everything Has a History, in which historians contribute stories about um, objects and, and things that have been overlooked in the kind of traditional histories of the past. And of course, we know that everything has a history. I mean, we know that studying the world historically is a good way to understand the world. Think about the first time you encounter a new person, right? What do you do? You say, hi, how are you? And then you ask some sort of question like, well, where are you from? What do you do? What do you like? Uh, and all these questions are essentially historical questions. They're asking about the person's past. And the reason you do that is because we all intuitively understand that Understanding the past about somebody is a good way of understanding who that person is, or at least where that person comes from. It's a good way of understanding the world better. One of the first tasks of this class is going to be to understand that even history, or the historical discipline, has a history. So in this video, what we're going to do is overview very briefly where the history of history begins, and then I'm going to present to you a few important questions or a few important debates that have shaped the history of history over the past few thousands, year, <laughs> thousands of years. Okay, so that's the task for this video. Let's get going. Last week we talked about the difference between history and historiography. And in this week, or in this first module of the course, what we're going to look at is one particular definition of historiography, right? The, the history of the historical discipline itself. We're going to look at how history emerged as a discipline, as a way of understanding the world, and the debates that shaped that discipline. The picture of history that we discussed last week was a decidedly modern picture of history. For this first module, though, and starting this week, we're going to look at how history emerged from all the way from the ancient period, so thousands of years ago. And what we're going to see over the course of time is how that modern picture of history came to be. What we're going to notice as you go through the readings and as you watch the videos is that history hasn't always been this modern picture of history. Of course, history as storytelling about the past is as old as people are. Stories about ancestors, events, and oneself have existed for as long as we can track, and those stories formed important community memories and built communities' understandings of the world and how it existed. The challenge is that much early history was done orally or in other means that historians of today have found difficult to decipher. Take for example uh, the Incans. European historians long believed that the Incans did not have any type of history beyond oral traditions, but eventually scholars discovered that kipu, or woven cords with a series of different knots, were in fact a type of historical document. They collected and preserved information about the population, about events, uh, and, and other matters for Incan posterity. They were a means of writing history just in a very different form. But it's really with the beginning of writing that most scholars begin to describe the, the, the start or the, the commencement of the historical discipline. And that's not to delegitimize oral or non-written forms of history. They were and remain powerful and important modes of telling the past, of, of understanding the past. 
They are, they are, however, often more difficult to trace and study, and it's for this reason that the history of history often begins with the history of writing. And within this history of writing, we start to see a conversation about what history is and how it should be done. And this brings up an important point. When we talk about historiography, when we talk about the history of history, what we're really talking about is the history of a particular intellectual discipline, the historical discipline. And while um, oral transmissions of the past and other non-written transmissions of the past are really important for understanding the ways that humans have explored the past, our conversation about historiography is really going to focus on the way that a discipline emerged, right? And that is a a story that really deals with writing or the advent of writing and the way that history has been discussed in written documents over time. And this process happened all over the world. Human societies throughout the globe have debated how and why history should be written. And so the story that we're going to look at about historiography, about the history of history, is a global story and it involves lots of different people in lots of different places and lots of different times. Studying history as a discipline means that we're not studying history as a specific thing, but rather we're studying history as a series of debates or conversations that have shaped what history is uh, in different periods of time. So our exploration of historiography is going to revolve around four important debates that deal with the kind of fundamental questions of how and why history is written. You will encounter the details of the history of history in the assigned readings, and we will discuss those readings in class, but before you dig into those readings, it's important to first understand the four main debates that we'll be tracking over the course of the history of history. The first is a debate about the subject of history. Historians since antiquity have debated whom to focus on when they write their histories. Should histories be about extraordinary people, for example, uh, political elites or warriors? and extraordinary events such as wars or political regime changes, or should it be about ordinary people and ordinary events, daily life? The second debate has to do with the perspective of the historian. Is the historian to be objective and thus distant from the subject of her or his history, or should the historian embrace subjectivity and the assumptions and motivations that have driven her or him to the topic in question? Implicit in this debate is the question of purpose. Is history to be written for a particular purpose? Or is it supposed to be devoid of any greater purpose other than understanding the past better? The third debate is about the audience of history. Is history an academic pursuit, closed off to all but the most qualified and trained in specific disciplines and conventions of the field, and thus intended for a very specific academic or maybe politically elite audience? Or is history a popular pursuit, written by and for the enjoyment and use of the public? Finally, the fourth debate is about the relationship between the past and the present, and possibly even the future. Is history the study of particular moments in time and space? Or is it the study of universal philosophical truths or universal conditions of humanity? And implicit in this question, this question is an understanding of the past as either linear right? Never the same, always changing, every moment of, in time being different, or somehow circular or cyclical, right? Going through great phases that repeat over and over again. These are the four main debates that we're going to pay attention to as we study the history of history from the ancient period all the way to today. And you'll notice that these questions or these debates have sometimes uh, a bit of overlap between them. Right? They are not necessarily easy to chunk apart, but they all get at important, fundamental questions about what history is and how it should be done. These are the four debates that we're going to focus on for the next few weeks, for the first module of this class. And as you go through the assigned readings, I want you to have these questions, these debates in the back of your mind. Think about, when you read about a, a new historian, think about how that historian maps onto these debates, where you would place that person on the various sort of questions that are central to the discipline. In reality, most historians don't exist on, in one camp or the other in these important debates. Most of these debates exist as sort of spectrums, right? Where there is kind of one end and another end, but most historians exist somewhere in the middle. 
So it's important to think about kind of nuance when you look at historians and think about the ways that they represent aspects of different camps within these debates. Thinking about history in this way is important because it teaches us that history isn't just one single thing. It's a conversation, a conversation that has taken place in lots of different parts of the world, in lots of different times. Okay, that's it for this video. Be sure to take your notes into class and be sure to keep these questions in your mind as you do the rest of the readings for this week. All right, good luck, good work, and see you soon.